Welcome to Bon Jovi Discussions. Today, I have my friend Renata, who is from Germany. Uh, how are you doing? Hi, Jerry. I'm doing good, and you? I'm doing good. You staying safe over there? Yes, yes, pretty much safe. And you? How how is everything? As safe as I could be. Uh, do you have a lot of Do you have a lot of COVID cases over there? No. So when you said I'm from Germany, I'm originally from Brazil, but I've been living in Germany here for some time now. In <laughs> Germany, it's pretty stable in this COVID area. So we were never under a uh, situation like uh, we were all quarantined properly. You know, people was trying to respect as much as they could. And this week, I think the schools are back. So slowly, life is it's getting back to normal. They are even considering concerts, this kind of stuff. Really? Really, I'm not, I'm not sure if you saw this. There was a, an article they, they did uh, in a city close to here, or I'm not sure if they did or they were gonna do a concert with uh, three different options. Like people would go to the concert without masks, another one with masks, another one with reduced capacity, but people really in a safe distance from another. So it's like a research from university. Yeah. <laughs> To, to take a look at that. And even Brian Adams was supposed to play in a different uh, a city, a different concert, but that one has been postponed for now. But it was supposed oh, okay. to be this week. I think they will go with that once uh, they see how the situation goes. It, it was, you know, everybody returning from summer vacation kind of uh, dragged down a little bit. But then if everything stays as stable, we will see slowly the the concert life coming back here. Yeah, it's it's interesting how you know the, the next year is going to play out, especially with concerts. You know, I think concerts are going to be like one of the very last things to come back. You know, that's yeah, at least for big artists. You know, like like Bon Jovi, for example. You know. Yes. Yeah, I think so too. Maybe you know, the thousand, two thousand, five thousand. I mean, there is in small venues and clubs and bars. So this yeah. should be first before the big ones. Yeah, you know, because like big bands, you know, like Bon Jovi or Kiss, Motley, you know, all those big bands, you know, they have so much overhead. You know, to if if you think these venues want to do big concerts. They can only do like half capacity. So say if you could fit a venue of 50,000 people, well now you can only fit 25,000 people. So that's obviously going to cut down on costs and uh, how much money is being uh, generated. So, you know, these bands they have to pay, you know, the crew, flights, travel, you know, all these miscellaneous costs, they're not going to be able to afford it, let alone make a profit, you know? So, yeah, exactly. I have my doubts about this reduced capacity because yeah. they all operate, yeah, in a certain margin. So I'm not sure if the promoter wants to reduce their costs and, you know, the the crew they don't have much choice, let's say. But you know, the the profits from the artists, the profit from the, you know, the the company who is taking them, all this, um, the marketing, it's a different. Uh, uh, area so uh, we will have to wait and see i just yeah. hope that uh, we can return to the concert life <laughs> i can't possible. wait <laughs> i i you know before we continue you know the moment where i'm in front of the stage again you know when i usually go to a concert i'm always like on my phone to take pictures and videos and you know, excited to share it with the world and I, I tell you the next concert i'm just gonna like embrace the moment and just enjoy it and have the biggest smile on my face and that's it <laughs> yeah uh, you know i sometimes i regret this because i i i really like to just be you know there and concentrate and i will take a few pictures and maybe you know, records a specific uh, track or a specific part of a song that I like, but I always regret that I don't have, you know, the full song at the end. But yeah. it happens every time. I go, I just want to be 
there in the moment. And then after I look at my pictures and videos, I'm like, why didn't I record more? Why didn't I, I take more pictures? But it's just, you know, to have some memories, uh, uh, to look yeah. back at the part of the, of, uh, yeah, everything. Yeah, see, there's some shows where I'll go to and I'll say, oh, I'm only going to take a, a few pictures and just enjoy the rest of the show. You know, thinking I'm only going to take like 10 photos. And then I'll look at my camera roll on my phone after the show, and there'll be like a thousand photos. <laughs> but yeah. So, anyway, let's, uh, let's start off with how and when did you become a Bon Jovi fan? So, it was the year of 2000. <laughs> with it's my life i i think i don't think i heard it on the radio or if i did i, I don't remember but i do remember the video clip and the moment i saw it and just how how the video is for me amazing i just love the video i love the the lyrics i love the energy i love the song and that started the whole bon jovi thing for me and uh the thing is, you know, the, have you heard about Bon Jovi before? I know that you also became a fan during uh, the It's My Lifetime. Yeah. Um, my dad listened to a little bit here, like, just like the hits. Like, so, like, I heard Prayer and stuff, but I really didn't get into it, you know, because I was a little boy in the 90s. So, like, I was listening to, like, um, like Backstreet Boys and all the other pop music that was going on. <clears throat> and then in... June 2000, I was watching the, this is when VH1 had music videos. And so I'm sitting there watching music videos. And, all, and, like, and like you said, you know, the video just, it, it captivated me. And just watching the stunt guy doing whatever he can to get to that Bon Jovi show. And then I saw the band in the video and I was like, wow, these guys look pretty cool. You know, because they're, they're in a, as an eight-year-old kid, you know, you think anything like that stuff is cool. So, like, seeing that band in the tunnel backing up traffic and everybody just, is just there to see the band. And that was the coolest thing. And then uh, a week later, I, uh, Crush came out. Yeah. And, and uh, I begged my dad to buy it for me. And uh, I didn't know if he was going to. And I went to, I used to go, like, day camp, like, during the day. And I came home that night, and this album was on my dresser by my CD player. And that's when I that when I fell in love with the band. I loved the entire album, and it all started from there. Yeah, I think for me it was the same. So I, I had heard always before. So always is such a big hit in Brazil. Really, yeah. like I would say it's probably bigger than Prayer, at least on that time where you know just radio and the MTV were were the places to to hear uh, new music. It. I don't, so in 94, I really don't remember. I was also very young and I didn't speak English, but always was always in the back of my mind. Even, you know, like during this time, maybe 98 or something, I realized, wow, I really like this song. And I, you know, realized, okay, which, who sings this? Oh, it's Bon Jovi. Okay, it's Bon Jovi. At some point, I, I do remember watching the video clip on MTV and I didn't like at all, you know, because always for me, it was always this romantic love letter that I thought in my mind. And when I saw the video clip, I was like, what a disappointment. I, I yeah. still like, you know, the song. I knew that it was Bon Jovi, but I really, you know, it, I don't know. I, I never felt like, okay, I should go after and, and try to figure out who are these people. And at that time, I also knew that Never Say Goodbye was from Bon Jovi. So, like, you know, you, you were like, okay, I know this. This is John singing. So, these are pretty big songs in, in Brazil. Yeah. Until nowadays. So, they are much, they are still played uh, everywhere. But when It's My Life came out, I was like, ah, Bon Jovi. I know, who, you know, like, I... I, I know this band. Yeah, yeah, and, let's, we'll go back to Always real quick, because we don't ever really talk about that uh always like you said it was kind of bigger than prayer i think as they were an established band at this point in 94 with always you know it, it was their biggest number one selling album they sold the most copies of uh, out of all of their singles you know this is back when singles were actually sold and it, it's funny because you probably know the story but that song was written for a movie called romeo's bleeding 
And it was about this guy who's like a complete stalker with this woman that, you know, he won't, he won't let go. And then, so John wrote it, recorded it, and then he saw the movie and didn't like it. So he pulled off the, the shelves and I guess he put it like, um, some, you know, he just th- threw it away off to a shelf. And I think it was Obi and someone else when they were doing the, the 94 Crossroads Greatest Hits compilation, uh, John didn't think it was any good. And Obi and the other guy, whoever it was, uh, begged John to put it on the Crossroads album. And thankfully they did. And it's their number one selling album or single. Biggest selling yeah. single. Yeah. You know, so, really- and, and so it's funny because, you know, just like Living Our Prayer, John didn't think that was any good and didn't want to put it on the album. But the same thing <laughs> with Always, you know. But, you know, like you said with the music video for Always, you know, it, it, if you hear it on the radio or just listen to the song, you think it's like this really romantic, like, album going to love yeah. you forever. And the video <laughs> is so, you know, scary, you know, especially like when he blows up that apartment at the end of the video, you know? Yeah. And, and I was a kid, you know, I didn't speak English very well. So you just know, no, I will love you always. And you think, oh, that's so romantic and, you know, so beautiful. <laughs> but you have to listen really to the song and, and together with the video clip. And it really makes uh, makes sense. And this whole story that John later told about the movie and how it was supposed to be for this kind of <laughs> crazy stalker <laughs> type of love. So. Yeah, I still, uh, extreme special, stalker of love. <laughs> I, I, I do have a special place for always because it, it's always, but it, it, it was not, you know, after after this, it was, you know, not so much the the favorite song or something like this. But when I saw them with It's My Life, I was like, oh, this band looks nice now because I also remember from the video clip they all had long hair and they were wearing earrings. And as you said, this uh, late 90s, early 2000s, it was boys band era, you know, all this yeah. pop music. And they, you know, this long hair that I've seen them on TV didn't fit <laughs> to my, uh, to who I was at that time. So I really didn't care when I saw, you know, the extreme makeover pose uh, in 2000. I was like, okay, let me see yeah. who are. Who are Bon Jovi? Who are they? And see, when I became a fan when I was eight in two thousand, you know, I just saw, you know, like how they looked, you know, like like then, you know, and you know, John's hair wasn't too long; it was long, but not too bad. But like, and my dad showed me um, the Slippery When Wet album and videos. I'm like, they look like girls, you know. <laughs> but then as I got older, you you understood that was what the 80s were about was the long big hair and the hair bands and and stuff like that but uh yeah Yeah. um and then so did you get into uh the crush tour dvd when uh yeah that came out i think it was 2001 i think uh like yeah it was recorded in august 2000 in zurich switzerland and then i think it was released on dvd like February, I like to say, of of 2001, I think. Yeah, I don't remember the release date, but I do remember when I saw it, I immediately asked also my my parents, like, I really want that uh, DVD. And, you know, times were not like today. The the internet was just starting and you you could not listen to music, you know, online. Yeah. I think it was the first album that I had. And I had the DVD. I don't remember if I, at that time I had Crossroads. It was not, also not so easy to find, you know, this, uh, the previous albums. But when I saw the DVD, I was like, I really want it. I really want it. Yeah. And I got it. And the problem, it took, took me six hours or, or five hours. It was a long time because I would listen to a song <laughs> and, and, re- and come, you know, rewind because I wanted to listen to it again. And then I was like, oh, I need to get the lyrics from it. And I want to understand what they are saying. You know, it was still, you know, you know, my, I was a teenager by this time. So it's still like, yeah, learning English. And, but really it took me forever just to, 
to finish the the DVD because I was so uh, I don't know the the word for that, but amused and uh, yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I was just saying because, like you said, there was no YouTube, no internet, so you couldn't watch live videos. And I haven't seen the first time I saw the band was uh, July two thousand one. And I became a fan in June 2000. And so, like, you know, I bought the, the DVD. And uh, I'd sit there in my room or in the living room. And I would just watch it over and over. And, you know, I, I remember watching the music video over and over and over. And it also had the Say It Isn't So video on there. And uh, and then I watched the, they did the interview and then the bonus features. And I, I thought John was just, like, the coolest guy. And, uh. And I'm trying to remember what songs are on here. I know they opened up with Prayer and Bad Name. Uh, All right. I know, I think then it's uh, one of the new songs. Uh, it was True Story Town, or I, I don't recall exactly. From the Crush album, they did Captain Crash, Say It Isn't So, One Wild Night, It's My Life, uh, True Story Town, Just Older, uh, Next 100 Years, and then... They didn't play it live, but it was background music at the end. Thank you for loving me, which I wish they would have done that one on the on the DVD. The show they actually did was actually longer. You know, I think they did like 28 songs at that show. And for some reason, they only put 21 or 20 songs on the DVD. Yeah, I know that I kept watching it, you know, every time. And that's it's really when you see that they had this, their reputation based on you know, they're a live band. When I saw the DVD, there was really no way back. If I was ready into Bon Jovi by that time, just because of my life in Crush, when I saw the the Crush DVD, I was just so much into Bon Jovi. Then it, it really, from that moment, I never looked back. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's your favorite performance on this DVD? Oh, I really like... It's hard to, to say. I, I really like Bed of Roses. It's not special, but it was also the first time that I saw uh, John dancing with someone from the audience. They had the bar yep. there on that time. I, I like just older. I don't think it's their best performance, but it's just one of my favorite songs. It's my life. Uh, <coughs> I, I don't think I can choose. No, I'll be yeah. there for you. Probably I'll be there for oh, you because after that's, <laughs> I saw. An, that's an amazing uh, performance on that DVD. You know, I, I always thought John kind of looked weird though. You know, with oh, the jean jacket and the hat, then the you know he looked like a like a 1800s Western cowboy meets 2000. You know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, let me see here. Uh, I liked. Um, I love the version of Runaway on there, you know, when it was just David and John. I wish they would have done that past the Crush tour, but I, I love that this, that acoustic, you know, and the way John's vocals uh, echo during that song, too. I it's, see. That was the first time I heard, I heard Runaway. If I had heard, you know, the electric version before, I had no idea. And then I heard Runaway on the DVD, I was like, what? What is that? Really, the first time that I can remember, it was the acoustic. Yeah, you, you know what? Uh, I remember because I didn't, uh, the debut album and was like one of the last albums that I bought at, when I was eight years old. I used to, my dad would give me one like every month. And I remember hearing Runaway on, on the DVD. And, uh, and then months later, I got like the debut album. And then I started, you know, the runaway is our first track, and all of a sudden you hear that, -da 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 -da, you know, that the key. I'm like, what is that? That's not. I thought like I got the wrong album or something. <laughs> and then you know, come to find out, that's that's the actual runaway song, you know, not the one that's on the DVD. But you know, but anyway, I love the DVD performance. You know, I wish they would have continued that past, you know, the crush tour. Yeah, me too. Even though they they released the one, uh, it was Lost Highway, right? The Madison Square Garden after that? It uh, the, or it was Have a Nice Day Tour. The Runway Acoustic? No, no. The After that, they just released another DVD. 
Yeah, the next official one was Madison Square Garden, which I actually, I went to that show. Oh, you were there. Yeah, I went to both nights. That was that was the end of the Lost Highway Tour, and uh, I went to both nights, July 14th and 15th. Um, but back to the Crush DVD, another thing that I liked was um, Next 100 Years, you know, especially when they had that band's uh, jam session at the end. Yeah, the end. Uh, yeah. Um, and then they closed with, well, on the DVD, they closed with Keep the Faith, which I always thought that was a great closer uh, of a show. You know, as far as at the end, you know, the, with the drums and, you know, bands on fire, the fireworks are going off. Yes. I do prefer prayer nowadays when they close it with prayer. But I was, you know, as the first thing that I ever saw from them was there, they were opening with prayer. <laughs> so it makes sense to, to close with keep the faith also to keep, you know, this uh, energy at the end of the concert. But uh, yeah. I, I do prefer prayer as a closer to be honest. It's just that at the end you're just, you don't want to be sad, so this this is the song that you can, you know, sing and jump and just be, you know, uh, energetic and don't be sad because it's going to be over, so I think yeah. it's still a good closer. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah, I, I like seeing as an, I've seen it as an opener a few times, and it's, it's a great song to really pump you up for the show, but like you said, I prefer it at the end because you know, I've seen the band about 53 times, and every single time I always get goosebumps when they play that at the end. Yeah. And, and you know, like you said, there, there's this, this form of energy in the arena or stadium, and it's it's amazing, you know. But um, when was the first time you saw them live? First time was in uh, Sao Paulo, 2010. So when you were talking uh, ten years, before, <laughs> yes, that you you had to wait. I don't know, 2001 to see them live. I had to wait ten years because from the moment I was uh, I be, yeah I found them it was 2000. They only came back to Brazil in 2010. They had been there for the these days tour, and that was it. So they were. Um, doing a promo for Bounce. As, okay. As, yeah, but it was really like a closed, uh, for, you know, for a TV. Um, they had a t uh, an interview on an interview, and I think they played Bounce, maybe. And that was it. So I think the band came for two days, and that's it. They came, they recorded, and they they left. And they came back only 2010. So in 2000. Oh Gosh. 2009 they had an interview uh, I don't remember if it was Richie or John or both of them but they when they were about to release the circle when they they said oh now that they were going to do a world tour and that this time they were including South America so I was I was so happy not only me I think they really everybody in South America was so happy that they were coming back I was just you know like finally because I had you know Crush, and then I waited for Crush, nothing. Bounce, there was this time that I knew they were coming just to do this interview, and they didn't come back. Have a nice day. You know, there was really ups and downs, because if you keep waiting, you have the expectation, yeah. and nothing. You know, they, you see the release, uh, the concert dates come out, and again, you know, it was just, oh, no, U.S., Europe, Japan, and sometimes Australia. Yeah. You're just like, when, <laughs> when they're going to come <laughs> down here so lost how highway the same and when they said in this interview they were coming to south america i was just super happy so and then even then i had to wait maybe yeah i think this was i don't know november that the circle came out they came in october 2010 so really oh more, more than 10 years but it was amazing concert it's still one of the best concerts i've been to because since they were they didn't come to, to Brazil and South America for so long. This the, They just played all the, they had to play all the hits, right? I mean, they, they really played, they played, I think, Superman tonight. And we were in Born to Follow from the Circle. But it was really like a three hours concert. There was Blaze of Glory. There was oh, all wow. these. Uh, there were really all the hits and I, I just couldn't be happier because I heard all the songs that uh, 
I really wanted to, I mean, there were more songs, but you know, the main songs, the hits that all I have waited all the time to hear, I was able to, to hear on this concert. And they also played In These Arms, which oh, is cool. my, my favorite song. It was maybe in the beginning, like six, seven songs on the, on the set list. And I, it for me was just, you know, like, wow, I'm, you know, full of emotions. I still, uh, yeah, have this memory as one of my favorite songs of the concert. <coughs> what did they open up with? Blood on Blood. Oh, wow. That's a great opener. It is. Even when I hear it today, I don't pay that much attention. You know, like, I like it. It can come on the radio. If, but if I'm just like in the mood and I, I go back to that time, it really gives me goosebumps. It was, it was just amazing. Like the, the stadium, I, I don't know how, how many people, but like everybody sang all, all entire concert. So it was really, you know, they had to, to come and, uh, you know, Let's say reopen the the country for Bon Jovi on that time. It was I think it was ninety five for the last time that Bon Jovi was there. So fifteen years without yeah. coming to South America, and you know for me it was ten years wait time to really see them from for the first time. So how many times have you seen them since two thousand ten? Oh, I have to count maybe seven. Make up for those ten years. <laughs> yeah, 17, 18, I don't know, but uh, yeah, last year I, I did uh, as, yeah, many, I went to many concerts uh, from this house, not for sale tour, because, yeah. you know, I, I just, I just wanted to go to, to as many as I could and, you know, depending on the date and the place they were playing, so, maybe, I, I don't know, I have to count, it's probably, it's not that, that many maybe uh, yeah i would say 18. still a lot of shows <laughs> yeah for the last if you consider uh, yeah. it's only from circle what about now and, and this house is not for sale tour, so yeah. just... i was gonna say you made up for those 10 years <laughs> <laughs> i wish you know i wish but <laughs> that was the okay not the idea but i i really wanted to go to uh, yeah, to the concerts here. So that that time I was living in Brazil, but uh, then I moved to Europe, and here they always have uh, uh, a great reputation, and they were playing uh, some, you know, some songs from these days, some from the old older albums. So I, I had really, uh, yeah, expectations about the concerts here. Uh, from this house is not for sale, but yeah, I, I know, you know the times have have changed, and uh, they are they are older than when they were uh, yeah. in 2010 when they were doing that. They were still doing three hours uh, concerts in 2010. So I mean, yeah. 2010, I think we cannot really count. I mean, it was really a uh, new situation for the band without Richie. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, from last year, they they are still. I think last year was a good, uh, a good run from the tour with the new lineup, and you know they have to take into consideration they are all not, all not so so young and uh, yeah. Yeah. But they still play, you know, two hours concert, two hours and a half, so it's still. Yeah. It's still you know, good. Even younger, you know, Bon Jovi's been has always been known to play you know, at least a two, three hour show. There's some bands that only p play for an hour and a half if you're lucky, you yeah. know? You know and, and our favorite band, you know, they play two hours, three hours sometimes, and it's great, you know? Because you, cause you look at some band set list and there's like maybe 15 songs on there. And that, that's including, a, you know, a drum solo or a guitar solo, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, Bon Jovi has like a 27 song set list, you know? Yeah. They also have a big catalog to choose from too. So, no, I try to to not to look at in the watch because you know when it's you're coming to the end, right? And you just don't want it to to come to the end. Yeah. And, uh, count count how many songs they did so far. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And even the the set list. So last year, uh, I I was in Brazil in 2017 when they they were there also for for the thousands not for sale. And a friend of mine she just told me like. 
no, don't tell me the set list. I really don't want to know. I want a surprise because on that time they had already toured uh, North America. So I looked up and I see, okay, that's what I can expect. Is something similar we're gonna have here? And this one said, oh no, I don't want to. I don't want to know. <laughs> and it was really it, this. After that, I I I. I I started doing the same because I remember those concerts. I was like, okay, now is this, now is that. I know, you know, if this song is coming, if this is not coming. And uh, I also had uh, a sign for Indies Arms. So I knew if they didn't play it on that position, I was just, yeah, I, start, I raised it and I started, uh, you know, showing, showing it because it was like, oh, I need, I really want to hear this song. So. But, but for last year on the tour, I really didn't follow that much. I mean, I mean, they always posted the set list. I kind of had an idea, and uh, I think it was in Moscow that I yeah, it was Moscow. It was the first uh, concert of the tour. I met a few, and then I asked him if they had rehearsed anything new. And then you know, my, this friend that she was also with me there in Moscow, and then she started asking. This song, this song, you know, like, is that I believe? Did you hear her? I believe. Did you rehearse? I died for you. You know, something, right? So I said, no, I don't want to know. Just tell me, did you rehearse something new? And then he said, no, we have rehearsed. You know, we have been practicing the same songs we've, we've been playing. And I was like, okay. <coughs> and then, you know, like, I didn't have uh, much expectations, but I, I was also not, I was like, I don't want to follow the face anymore for the concerts yeah. that I. I still want to go to because I want to be surprised. I want to know if they will come up with something, um, you know, on the encore when they come back, if there will be some surprise. And this is something that I still like. So I prefer not knowing just to have a general idea and then uh, be happy <laughs> with whatever we get. Yeah, that, I'm the same way. You know, I, I think uh, I like the surprises because, like, you know, diehard fans like you and I, you know, yeah, of course, we like seeing the hits, but like, like we're hoping for a rarity or something that they don't ever play, like, you know, like these days or always, that's a big one, you know, or something even deeper than that, you know, so, you know, through the whole entire show, you know, I'm always like, play something, you know, that deep, you know, here in North America, they don't, they because here in America, everybody's about the hits, and that's it. And so, you know, you're lucky if you get something deep with John, but like you were saying earlier, you know, in Europe and stuff, you know, their deeper tracks are, are so well known. And, you know, and so, of course, they go there and they play these days and they sing a love song and, you know, all those other ones. But um, another thing that they did, too, on, they were rehearsing Hey God. And it was actually on a few set lists, too, for this house tour. They never once played yeah, it. Yeah, I saw that, too. Yeah. yeah. And I, I was just, I was, because I, I don't think I've ever seen Hey God live. I don't think so. And so, like, on this tour, you know, I went to, I think, maybe eight shows. And each one, I was like, please play Hey God. Please play, play Hey God. Never. Never happened. For this tour, what I was really hoping, but I don't think they they even put it in the set list, was the Zanta Love song. So yeah. either I would have uh, a sign for In This Arm or for the Zanta Love song. So I think from... Yes, all my favorite songs, I would still like to hear this or um, Wild is the Wind, I think, oh. I, and just older, but, you know, just because just older, there are, there's this California line over there, I'm not sure if we're gonna see, there yeah. was always this moment with John and Richie on stage when, when he was singing it, so I don't, I don't know if uh, it will be possible is still to hear it but this is definitely uh, a song that i would i would like i mean of course if they play something you know hey god something to believe in something for the pain i believe oh, i'm yeah. really happy with with any of these uh, rarities but i think for, from my list i would still be willing to hear one of the, of, of those do you still have any songs that you really love but haven't uh, heard uh, uh, the, the, there's two that I really want to see that I never have. Uh, never say goodbye acoustic. Obviously, they only do it acoustic. Um, and stick to your guns. I've never seen either of those two live. So those are the two. 
Which one? Sorry, the connection was lost. Oh, me. I'm sorry. Uh, never <laughs> say goodbye and stick to your guns. Oh, stick to your guns. Yes, it's, a, it's yeah. also one of my favorites. But I really don't think, I think the last time they played it was uh, 2008 when... Uh, Amsterdam. Yeah. Yeah. And the fans brought the signs and yeah. the lyrics for them. So I... For that one, I would still like it, but since uh, it hasn't been played ever since, I would uh, not count. But yeah, also yeah. never say goodbye would be yeah perfect as well. I think. Uh, I mean, yeah. there are so many. There are so many. I just feel because uh, as we were saying, they they didn't tour in Brazil during Have a Nice Day, Bounce, and uh, in Lost Highway. There are some songs that you just hear when they are touring that album right so if you don't hear them during that time then it's it's gone so there are certainly songs from those albums that i would still like to hear yeah i think on um uh the previous conversation someone saying it was talking about misunderstood misunderstood was also very big in Brazil. Yeah. i think everywhere right it was a, it was a single it was a major hit and yeah. uh I remember reading something in some forums last year that people were like, oh, let's try to get uh, Bon Jovi to play Misunderstood in Brazil. But I, I think this idea slowly <laughs> disappeared because they, they haven't played in such a long time. So that, that wouldn't uh, happen. But uh, yeah, yeah. There, are, there are songs that I would still like to, to hear from those albums. But you know, it's just like, okay, let's stick to the to you know like stick to your guns for instance that i would yeah. rather you gotta yeah. promote what's out you know like you were saying you know unless you go to that you know for example if you want to see misunderstood the perfect time to have seen that was during the bounce tour and perfect example i wish i could relive the bounce tour because they don't play any of those songs and so you know it's a shame they don't but uh yeah, I think they played, for instance, Undivided here uh, in Europe or in Germany quite uh, often after that. I think I mean, in, in the other tours, no, I mean, not often, it was uh, rare, but they were still playing it, at least in, in Germany. But I was not living here, so I didn't. Of course. <laughs> yeah, any of, uh, of this in the, in the last years, then it's, uh, it's been gone. I think they, it's not too... Uh, it's probably not one of John's favorite albums. <laughs> he never yeah. did anything anymore from, from Bounce. No, I don't think. You know, like I remember uh, on the cruise last year, someone asked him about why he doesn't play anything from the Bounce album. And I forget word for word, but he was like, you guys like that album? <laughs> and, and he's like, you know, that album just didn't do so well. And, you know, we have such a huge catalog and blah, blah, blah. And so, judging from that answer, I don't think we're going to see any of those songs again. Maybe Every Day or Bounce. Yeah. You know, it, it's nice that we get to see Joey uh, at Runaway Trips and stuff like that. But as far as the band goes, I can only ever see maybe Every Day and uh, Bounce play. If ever, right? If ever. If yeah. ever, yeah. If. That's the if. big key word is if. if. <laughs> No, but this is the same thing. So when when they were asked why didn't they tour uh, in South America uh, for so long, they, it was basically something like this. They said, oh, the the record sales didn't go well. But you know, uh, they don't have the record piracy there. Piracy was so. I mean, it was so big already. On, I mean, after two thousand, so people were really not buying anymore. And I mean, they were. They were not living there, so they, they couldn't yeah. know. And the record company tell them, oh, you should not go there or, you know, depending on, on, on your sales, then they would have never come back because, yeah, uh, yeah I mean, you have piracy and now you, you even have streaming, right? So you don't necessarily need to, to buy the record. You're just, you may be subscribed to, to any of these streaming platforms and that's it. So, uh, I don't think this is a good measure, as they say, it was not so well received. Yeah. There are still people who, who want to hear those songs. Yeah. Well, uh, it, was, it was great talking with you today, and I appreciate you coming on, and uh, hopefully I get to see a, a, a show. You, 
you, you don't ever come to the U.S. for shows, do you? Sorry? Did you come to the U.S. for a show last year? No, no. Okay, I'm thinking of someone else. Um, but uh, anyway, you know, hopefully I see you at a show sometime, and uh, it was great chatting with you. Yes, I was planning to go now for 2020, but I think the whole world changed. And uh, That's right. That's where I was um, confusing it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Unfortunately, this tour got uh, canceled, and you know, who knows what the future is going to be. You know, when we get to see them again, you know, yeah, I, you know, before we conclude, you know, I see runaway trips happening next year, um, but I don't see a tour happening next year. So, I, yeah, I can also see that happening. I'm not, I mean, from one perspective, in the sense that it's less people, it's possible. I just don't know how much uh, uh, germaphobic John is. <laughs> Because, yeah. you know, you know, you, the, the, the thing of uh, runaways is the experience the way you touch and, you know, people want to hug and this kind of stuff. So yeah. I don't know, definitely in, in, in the perspective of the public home that it's, you know, 300 people or so, it's, uh, it's visible. But the tour, I think we're going to have to wait a bit more. But uh, yeah. it's part of my plans to, to watch, uh, to go to U.S. and... and uh, and see them do the arenas there. I think it's a different, uh, it's just a different uh, experience from what I, I've yeah. seen yeah. here. In, if, in, if you do, go to you know New York City or New Jersey because they put, that's, those are the best shows when they play here. You know, and I, I want to come to Europe and, and see them there, Australia even. Um, but well, so anyway, uh, it was great having you on. Thank you, and I hope Thank you stay safe. Thank you, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.